How's everyone doing? Good? You guys are ready for a great show? I'm really, really excited about what we're going to share with you guys today and tomorrow. We've got some great things planned. You know, it's been, it's been really an incredible seven years. Since starting, since starting Intelligent in 2004, we've seen this market just explode from an idea of what could be to today what's almost a billion dollar business. In many ways, intelligence, leadership, and vision has helped shape this industry. In 2004, we introduced one of the first integrated community platforms. Back then, it was called Community Server. Even then, we were thinking community. Then in 2006, 2007, we innovated again through analytics, bringing forth one of the first social analytics tools into the market. I still remember the day that I walked into the Enterprise 2.0 show in Boston, and I said, we've got analytics. And everyone said, well, who cares about analytics? We don't need analytics. What are we going to use that for? Today, analytics is the heart and soul what drives how organizations think about using social in their business. We've also had a long-standing belief in platform. And I'm going to talk with you more today about our beliefs in platform and how we're executing against those beliefs, both today, in the near term, and into the future. I'm also very proud of our success as a business. With Patrick's leadership and guidance, we have taken some great technology and transformed it into an enterprise software business. I love the fact that some of the most well-recognized brands in the world run intelligent software. It's fun for me when I'm sitting down with my kid on a Saturday morning, and we're talking about the new Lego game that he's playing online, and I'm like, hey, look, did you know they're, they're actually using the software your dad builds to run their community? So if you have questions, go there. I'm not going to let them sign in. But today, when the industry thinks about social, it's you, our customers, they think about. When the industry writes about social, it's you, our customers, they write about. And when the industry gives awards for what has been accomplished, it is, again, you, our customers, that they talk about. So I'm really excited about that. So that's evident this week. That's evident this week. If you attend our business tracks, our technical tracks, you can learn firsthand from some of our customers. As Patrick and Wendy both mentioned, you can hear from Microsoft, you can hear from Dell, you can hear from GameStop. Hear them tell their stories about how they're using social in their businesses to transform how they interact with their customers, with their partners, and employees. What I'd like to do for the next hour is share our vision for where, where Telgen is headed both today, tomorrow, and into the future. So every day we're bombarded with complexity. Um, there's so much information that's available to us now, more than ever before. I read a statistic somewhere that said that today we have more access to information than we have in the previous 2,000 years. I watch my kids as they do schoolwork and the process that they have to go through, and I'm so jealous. I remember all those days at the library, researching, writing papers. They spend a couple minutes on Wikipedia, and they can get all the information they need. In fact, I think the new skill set going forward isn't the ability to research and find information, but it's to be discerning about what information you should accept and use. And that's really challenging. But organizations today are just bombarded with, or, with, with information. They have to use this information to make decisions, they have to make choices consistently. And it's proven that companies are losing productivity because they're overwhelmed with the amount of choices they have to make. In fact, research that we've seen from IDC and from other analysts has said that, that most organizations, information workers, people like you and me are trying to solve problems, spend 15 to 25% of their time looking for the information they need. It's a big problem. It's about 2.5 work hours a day, and what IDC had predicted back in 2000 was approximately $5,000 per employee per year. Adds up incredibly quickly. So social has really become the new normal. It's become the new normal for how we make decisions. You can think about it from your personal lives, from your business lives, whatever it may be. 
Popular social networks like Facebook and Twitter have really influenced our decision-making process. We, of course, trust our peers and our friends to help us make recommendations um, about what choices to make, whether it's what house we're buying, what neighborhood we're living in, what book we're reading, you know, what document we may be reading at work. You know, again, from my personal life, I use, I use Amazon a lot. And I will not let my friends or family use my Amazon account because I don't want them to interfere with the results of the information that I'm getting back from that tool. I find it to be incredibly valuable. In fact, I've seen this go through a series of information waves. And I'm going to tie this back a little bit later in my presentation. The information waves that I've seen the industry go through, it was first, was, it first was content. So when the web first really came on the scene in the mid-90s, it was all about putting out content. Pretty soon, we as people figured out that, you know what? There's too much content. We need tools and technology to help us filter out this content. Advent of search. Now we're at the point where search can't even fulfill the needs we have, and social has really stepped into that role. Where we're using social tools on a daily basis to help make choices for the products we consume and the decisions that we make. So what I want to do next is I want to share our vision for social what we intelligence see happening in the market, how we see you taking advantage of social tools and technologies for your customers, for your partners, for your employees. Our vision is that social is not just another set of tools and technologies. Our vision has actually been consistent back to 2004, that social is about transforming the way people communicate and learn and help each other make decisions and choices. It is fundamentally changing how your customers engage and interact, from the business side to your external side. So how does this belief translate to a set of technologies? Before I can share where we're going, I want to share a little bit, some details of what, what it looked like back in 2004. So this, this is actually going to bear with me a minute. This is a slide from a presentation I did in 2004 when I was first pitching the idea of community server to some of our early customers. And the idea was that you had people and you had information. And then you had all these tools and technology. You had online tools and offline tools from email distribution lists to news groups to some of these newer tools like blogs and forums. And the huge frustration to me was always that each one of these information tools acted like its own island. So I had groups of people or communities that formed around email distribution. I had groups or people that formed around blogging, or groups or people that formed around forums or web-based discussions. And it was always incredibly frustrating. So the original vision for Telligent was how do we bring all these pieces together? How do we make information independent of technology so that I can communicate with the tool or technology that fits me best, email, blogs, forums, whatever it may be, and I can communicate with anybody else irregardless of the tools and technologies they wanted to use. So we're really excited because not only were we the first to execute into this vision, but it has remained consistent. It has remained consistent as far as execution. Now, when you think about the evolution of social, and I'm setting all this up because when I get to the product demonstrations, I want to show you how the product and the technology supports the vision that we have for the market and what we see happening going forward. Early on with social, it was all about demonstrating innovation. Organizations adopted social tools and technologies. Think 2004 to 2006. Blogs, forums, some early wiki stuff, some profiles, because they wanted to show innovation to their end customers. Hey, we're using a blog. We must be innovative as a company. You should look at us, because we're thinking differently about how to communicate. Now, that was all well and good. And we saw some incredible success there, some great standalone tools and technologies. I really believe that one of the key tipping points where social moved from a cool new technology was in 2006, when Dell as an organization had to manage through a crisis and said, you know what? Rather than using the traditional tools and technologies, we're going to use a blog to have a direct, authentic conversation with our customers. And from that, we saw a complete transformation about how the industry thought about communicating with its customers. Now, I'm extremely proud of the fact that Dell is still one of our flagship customers today, 
And if you want to learn more about the Dell story, I hope you join me, Bill Johnston, and Lionel Menchaca later today in one of the business tracks. We'll be talking about the Dell story. It's a great example. So today, social is very use case specific. Organizations are rolling out social software for pretty specific purposes. Whether it's digital marketing, whether it's customer support, there's a number of different ex examples. Customer support is the one that most people are, are pretty familiar with. But social is enabling people to have a new, age, new way to engage. But the problem is, is that social has been focused at a department level. What has happened is that within these organizations, there's literally been an infestation of social tools and technologies, but all different tools and technologies. Tools and technologies that don't interoperate with one another, that don't communicate, that provide great standalone solutions that do very exciting things for individual departments, but don't allow the organization to operate and function as a whole together. What they wind up with, and I hear this a lot from a lot of our customers and new customers we're working with, is they have a hodgepodge of solutions. They're like, yeah, we got a wiki tool, we got a blog tool, we got a forum tool, we got a profile tool, we got a document management tool, we got an external support tool. And really, Rob, what we want to do is we want to figure out how to, how to kind of put that all together so that we have a common infrastructure set of technology that can communicate and interop. Because the very problem we were trying to avoid when we started adopting social was these islands of information. We want to open this up. We want to get people more connected with one another. So our vision for social has always been about a platform, information independent of technology, allowing organizations such as yourselves to take social and begin to interweave it into the very DNA of your organization. Some great case studies. I mean, Scion's here, and you're going to hear from them and some of the different tracks, how they have said that social isn't just a tool and technology for us, but it is woven into our corporate strategy, how we communicate. Social is not just another set of tools and technologies. Social wraps the entire investment enterprise software that you've made. It interconnects. It's the glue that begins to bind all that together. So our vision here has been very consistent. What I want to talk about today is the future how we're executing against this vision of a social platform to enable you to match this vision up with your corporate strategy. So the social ecosystem, this is, this is probably the last kind of architecture slide I'll be talking through, is another really important slide as it comes to understanding our vision for social and how we fit this world together. The social ecosystem is a map that represents all the different interactions that happen all the different interaction points and connection points where your customers are, where they're talking about you. Now, you have a lot of different ways to interact in that social ecosystem. We divide it up into three layers. First, there's the participating layer. This is where you have the ability to go in and engage with your customers. They're talking about you. They're talking about your brand. It's where you show up and say, hey, I'm Rob. I saw you had some questions about Telligent. I just want to give you some feedback. I'm not here to sell you. I just want to talk to you. I can participate in the community that already exists. If you're thinking about getting started in social, this is the best place to start. Your customers are there, your partners are there, go engage with them. Next is what we call the manage layer. And the manage layer says organizations can take advantage of some of the consumer-facing social media tools and use those for their own advantage. Start your own Facebook page. Start your own Twitter account. Use that to engage with your customers. But you have every right in the managed layer to say, hey, you know what? I represent this organization. I'm actually here to help sell products, and I'm going to tell you about those products in the hopes that you eventually decide to buy. And lastly is the company-owned communities, or what's more commonly referred to today as on-domain communities. Communities that you run, strongly associated and attached to your brand, where you own the data, you own the branding, you own the presence, you're connected with the customer, integrated with your enterprise IT systems and investments. The key here, though, that we've been talking about for quite some time is integration. In fact, when you look at the analyst reports today and you read about what people are talking about with regard to social and the social ecosystem, I believe it was Altimeter that recently published a report 
and said the average organization manages over 140 different social accounts or presences, the Facebook accounts, the Twitter accounts, the LinkedIn accounts, the blogs they're running, you know, the on-domain communities they're running, the branded communities they're running, all these different touch points. So it's getting very, very complex to manage. 